what a replay attack is, is let's say that you're sending out encrypted packets, and I can't break the encrypted packets because your encryption's just too giant and powerful. So what I'll do is I'll just replay them. So let's say that you have a client that's ordering 100 widgets and they're kind of pricey. I'll go in and I'll replay that, uh, those packets over and over again. So order 100, then 100 more, and 100 more, and 100 more, and 100 more. And then before you know it, your relationship with that vendor is, uh, has gone kind of south. So what happens with IPv6 is, is that it does this uh, encryption on the fly, and as you transmit the information, if it's retransmitted, I can tell it's been retransmitted because the numbers don't match up. Well, wait a minute, according to our log, you sent this packet a while back, why are you sending it again? It must be fake. And so it'll go ahead and throw these things away. So replay attack, because we have a signature, a sender signature on every packet, it's gonna make it very, very difficult for anybody to try and do this replay. Now it uses a, a thing called ESP. <laughs> I know, you, you picture, oh, with the tarot cards and all that stuff. What ESP means in here is encapsulating security payload. This is over on page 81. With encapsulating security payload, what we're gonna do is, is we're going to take and encrypt the contents of the packet. Because you can actually have IPsec in two different methods. You can use what's called authentication headers, which is AH, or you can use encapsulating security payload, which is ESP. Now, what's the difference here? Well, authentication headers means that you're just proving that you are who you say you are. I have a digital certificate issued to me. You know, it's all been handed out by VeriSign or, th or uh, GoDaddy or somebody that says, yes, this is actually Doug Bassett. In fact, it even has my picture. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, the lights are kind of bright. There we go. It has my picture on it. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is that what happens is, is that we keep half of this with the certificate authority that issued the certificate. So when you present your credentials, I will go up and I'll say, hey, certificate authority, you know, GoDaddy or Thwaite or something like that, is this digital certificate still valid? And I will compare the two pieces. And if it's not valid, I know that it's not you. Now, again, with authentication headers, it doesn't necessarily mean that my packets are encrypted. I can just say, hey, I want to authenticate it. I want to prove that you are who you say you are. And encryption um, is actually kind of a, a processor intensive uh, application. Maybe I don't want to actually encrypt it. We can still do that. We can say, hey, we're just proving that I am who I say I am. So if you're going up to amazon.com, you're actually going to amazon.com and not some middle of the road place trying to steal your information. If we do want to encrypt, we use those encapsulation security payload. And with ESP, what encapsulation security payload does is it encrypts the information, but it also lets me know if it's been changed. Because one of the things that we do is we put a little checksum type deal on there. It's not a checksum, it's, it's more of a um, kind of a thumbprint that says it is from who it says it's from. And number two, it'll tell us if anything has been changed. That way, they're not going to be able to replay it. They're not going to be able to pretend to be who I am, and they're not going to be able to modify it. 